Um, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Um, I'm really happy to have my friends who I met in Vermont, Dave and Angela here, and they are the RPM Public Conspiracy. Um, yeah. and they've, been, they've been touring all around the country with this show, so we're really lucky to have them here tonight, and um, we'll do a little plug for their next show at the end of the show tonight. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so here we are. <laughs> um, so, first, before we get going with our show, um, we're going to have a really fantastic show called The Bond Market with uh, Megan Hoveni as the Exothermic Reaction Theater. <laughs> uh. So, uh, the Exothermic Reaction Theater presents The Bond Market. Our story begins with Sir Humphrey Davy in 1808, the first person to isolate elemental sodium by passing an electrical current through sodium hydroxide. Sir Humphrey Davy and asks, is there anything that I can do to make myself stable enough to go into the water? And the ghost of Sir Humphrey Davy replied, well, uh, yes, <laughs> you can find a gas molecule and uh, make a nice little bond there. It'll make you stable enough to go into the water. That's great. So, Nathan went to his friends, the noble gases, <laughs> and asked, would any of you like to bond with me? <laughs> We're sorry, Nathan. This news will hurt. We can't bond with you, because we're inert. <laughs> <laughs> so, downtrodden but not defeated, Nathan goes back to the grave of Sir Humphrey Davy and asks again, a little more insistently, oh, Sir Davy, is there anything that I can do um, to be a little less reactive? Perhaps you have a suggestion of a gas that I could bond with. And Sir Davy remembers, oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I forgot to tell you the first time, but uh, there's this chlorine gas. She's perfect for you. <laughs> Elementally speaking. <laughs> so Nathan goes to the 
internet and finds chlorine gas <laughs> and emails her and asks her if she wouldn't mind bonding. She agrees to go on a date with him. They go out to dinner and she orders the most expensive meal. <laughs> then she asks for a foot rub, <laughs> which Nathan gracefully gives her. And then she asks for tickets to Glee Live. <laughs> which isn't really Nathan's thing, but he was into her, so he did. <laughs> it was starting to occur to Nathan that this relationship was a little bit unbalanced. <laughs> Less of a give and take and more of a him giving and her taking. <laughs> but thus is the nature of of uh, ionic bonding, <coughs> he had to give her his electron for her to continue to be attracted to him. Uh. <laughs> long, long. <laughs> so, at the end of his frustration, he asked for his electron back and she vanished into thin air. <laughs> Nathan went back to his normal routine. He couldn't think of any more solutions to his problem. He continued to read to the blind, play beach volleyball, and fix school buses on the weekends. <laughs> and one time at a beach volleyball game while he was avoiding the ocean, he ran into two hydrogen atoms, holding hands with an electron between them. He thought, wow, you guys, you look so stable, so happy, and so equal. Oh, hey there, fellas. How do you do? I can't help but notice a thing or two. You're so well bonded. You share that charge. One proton each, but with hearts so large. <laughs> Frank and Frank <laughs> explained their covalent bond to our friend Nathan, <laughs> in which they both needed an electron to form a stable compound. With the help of perfect timing, they both found the electron that they shared equally between them. Well, Nathan thought that this was just great. He was so excited about this covalent bonding thing that he went back to the grave of Sir Humphrey Davy and asked him, uh, is there anything I can do to find one of these covalent bond relationships? And Sir Davy responded, no, that's unnatural. You are violating the laws of chemical attraction. <laughs> Downtrodden, but not defeated, our protagonist goes one aisle over in the cemetery to the grave of Albert Einstein. <laughs> he implored him for help. Luckily, Albert Einstein earlier that year had been voted executive in charge of scientific laws. <laughs> he thought for a minute and then gave his judgment. And he said, I have never made a breakthrough discovery by respecting the rigidity of scientific law. We're asking our children to have flexibility of mind and imagination, so I don't see why we can't ask the same of the laws of chemistry. So, so way to go, Nate. He found his match, another sodium, and quite a catch. And then they bonded. 